Well, welcome back, folks, to another edition of Your Questions, My Answers. This is episode 14. Uh, unfortunately, Jerry was busy tonight and uh, was unable to make the show, but uh, I am your uh, your host for this evening, uh, Walt White, and I'm here with Justin Holman, the newest member of Stogie Review. So, uh, Justin, what are you smoking tonight? Uh, tonight I have a Sancho Panza Double Maduro Escudero, I believe is how you pronounce the size. It's a... Uh, seven and a quarter inches long with a 54 inch ring gauge and uh, just lit it up so it's going to take quite a bit of time to smoke this one uh... sounds, sounds good, you got anything going as far as uh, beverage? Mm. yeah tonight I uh, broke out my 12 year old Tullamore Dew Irish whiskey I actually bought that with some birthday money I got so it's a nice little whiskey and Kind of interested to see how it's going to pair with this particular cigar. You got me beat. I've just got a bottle of Nestle's Pure Life Purified Water and uh, a Tatawahe Series P, uh, the P1 size. It's a Corona Gorda. I'm not real sure of the uh, of the actual dimensions, but it, it's about a 48 by maybe six. So it's a fairly decent sized cigar. I got probably about two hours here. But uh, let's move right along here and. Uh, as Jerry would say, our standard disclosure uh, still applies. So we uh, we reserve the right to be wrong, and uh, if we are wrong, or you think we're completely off base, or you know all of the above, uh, we would appreciate if you shot us an email and you know let us know, uh, give us the right answer, or kind of steer us in the right direction. We'll try to correct that in the future. Looking for the latest cigar news and opinions? Then look no further than the Dog Watch Social Club. Your hosts, Bob and Dale, offer their thoughtful conversation, considered opinion, all with a touch of insanity. Check out Dog Watch Shows for Club, the original cigar podcast. Visit them today at dogwatchshowsclub.com. With that said, we're going to move right along to question number one, and this comes from Greg through uh, email. And Greg is uh, addressing Jerry here. Unfortunately, as I mentioned, Jerry's not here, but uh, we'll read the question as is. Greg says, Jerry, I own an inexpensive but well-constructed humidor that has served me well over the years. Lately, however, I've noticed darkish stains on the interior which I am almost sure are due to dripping from an old, over-soaked humidifier. There is also a faint smell of mold. Do you re recommend scraping or sanding these stains away, or should I try something else? Thank you very much for your help. So, Justin, what would your advice be to, to Greg about these humidor problems he's having? he can do um, if there's a pretty good size stains in there that's from the water damage you may have uh, completely damaged the humidor but if you want to attempt to save it what I would suggest is uh, lightly sanding it down you don't want to take too much just enough to form a little bit of uh, a sawdust in the inside of the humidor <clears throat> make sure you clean the dust out uh, thoroughly if you want you can vacuum it out or just turn it over depending he didn't say what the size of it was so I'm not sure if he's got a large one or not. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Just make sure you you thoroughly clean out the sawdust. Um, let it sit open for probably 12 to 24 hours. Well, uh, he he mentioned that this was an inexpensive humidor, so it leads me to believe that it, that just uh, just as you assumed that I, I would think it's just a small unit. But uh, what I'm curious about is whether or not it's inexpensive in terms of just. Uh, of price and you know what what really is his his opinion or, or what it, what is his uh, consideration of inexpensive because um, there are humidors that are actually solid Spanish cedar which are fairly inexpensive and then you've got your your really inexpensive which is uh, a plywood box with a Spanish cedar veneer inside now if you have a, uh, a stain inside the uh, inside the unit and you've got just a, a thin Spanish cedar veneer uh, I, I don't know that I would go really doing anything to it. I mean, uh, chances are you could sand a little too much and go through that uh, that layer of uh, veneer. And a lot of times, what you'll see is a phenolic resin or a phenolic backer on those veneer sheets, which is uh, black. So you'll get an even darker looking patch on the inside of your humidor, which will actually be glue or, or a phenolic backer. Now, if it's if it's solid inside, which is, what I mean by solid is if it's if the side interior and exterior are all one one mass of solid wood, like it's uh, it's stained and finished on the outside, and the same piece of wood is unfinished on the inside, then you could probably lightly sand it and uh, not have to worry about anything. As far as scraping goes, again, you don't want to go scraping on veneer. Uh, you could potentially damage it, 
but um, you know, if you got a solid wood piece, you might be able to scrape it. Just uh, be be cautious, and uh, I would use a cabinet scraper and not a razor blade, uh, just because you'll get a different effect with a cabinet scraper. And actually, a cabinet scraper is more of a specialty tool. You won't find them uh, in too many places. You certainly won't find one in Home Depot. I don't ever remember seeing one there. But that would be your, your definitely bet, your, your best bet. It's like. Uh, it looks like an oversized index card, but it's uh, steel, and it's got a little burr on the end, which actually will, will scrape some of the the, uh, the material away. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, depending on what its humidor is, I would uh, I would maybe lightly sand it, regardless, very lightly, uh, just let it air out, and uh, hope for the best. All right. Well, we uh, hope that question uh, our answers help you out a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and move on to question number two. This one comes to us from countries where Cuban cigars are legal. I will be traveling later this summer. Well, well, well uh, it's to the best of my knowledge, um, Cuban cigars are legal in every other country. Um, as far as I know, uh, the United States is the only country that has a trade embargo with Cuba. So uh, you should be a, you shouldn't have any problem at all. However, uh, just keep in mind that it is illegal for a United States citizen to uh, to purchase Cuban products, regardless of whether you're outside the country or not. Uh, Justin, can you clarify that for me? I think I've got it. I think I've got that right, but uh, not sure. Yeah, uh, as far as I know as well, we're the only country cigars. But like you said, technically it is illegal for an American to. Uh, buy or smoke a Cuban cigar anywhere in the world. However, you know, unless someone's going to stop you and ask your passport and really take the time to harass you about it, you're probably okay. And really, if you want to be safe after you purchase it, take the band off. No one can prove it's Cuban. So that's uh, that's all I got on that one. Yeah, yeah. I don't think anyone's going to be beating down your door if uh, if you do go enjoy a Cuban cigar somewhere else. But uh... Technically, you know, you just you want to keep that in mind, just for technicality reasons, just in case something pops up down the line. But uh, anyway, we're uh, that was that was actually pretty straightforward and simple. So we're going to move right on to uh, question three, and this comes in from Mike through the contact form, and he says, "Hey guys, I had a question that any cigar uh, that <laughs> that any cigar enjoyer has faced. I was wondering what you guys do to separate singles to minimize the marrying of flavors." I have been talking to Brian about the Frigidor, and I continue to, to rest singles in smaller humidor or empty boxes, but I need to separate different lines and makes. What do you suggest? Again, great show. So Justin, what would your suggestion be to Mike as far as separating uh, loose cigars uh, you know, to keep the, the flavors from marrying? Well, really, it's probably not going to be an issue if, unless you're doing real long-term storage, and I would say anything over a year. Then the cigars, if you're keeping in, them in there an average of say three, six, or even nine months, uh, you're not going to run any risk of the flavors marrying together. Uh, if you want, you can take an old cigar box, uh, you can leave the lid on there, put your singles in there, put that in your fridge door, and your singles will be just fine. I don't see any issues. Um, however, if you do want to do longer storage, just take a couple of different cigar boxes, you know, put more of your, your Maduros together, more of your Naturals together in two separate boxes, and store them that way. And he would definitely um, <clears throat> be safer there. But again, anything less than you back in this as well on how they store their cigars. Well, what do you got to add? Yeah, I uh, I, I think you touched on a, something that was very important. You mentioned that you should keep your your maduros and naturals separate, and uh, I think that goes for any cigar that's kind of on the oily side. You don't want you know a really oily cigar kind of next to a cigar that's got a fairly dry wrapper to begin with. You know, I, I really think that's the only situation where you're going to see an immediate uh, change from one cigar to the other. It's just because you've got an oily cigar in direct contact with a dry cigar. So, you know, one's going to act like a sponge and pull off the other. But but just as you said, Justin, I, I really don't think there would be much of an issue uh, for, for short-term storage. I mean, anything under a year, I, I really don't think the, the marrying of flavors is going to be all that detectable. Now, you know, I, I could be wrong, but... I, uh, I I really don't see it being an issue. Um, however, um, it, you know if you're if you're going to be storing your cigars long term, for, you know over a year, um, 
if you have uh, if, if you purchase singles and you still have the cellophane on your cigars, uh, the cellophane should be enough to keep uh, those flavors from marrying. I mean, just uh, leave the cellophane on. Or if you insist on taking it off, I would just kind of group wrappers together. Uh, just you know, just as Mike mentioned originally, just use uh, empty cigar boxes or. Uh, I've been known to use uh, the the individual sleet or the individually fingered uh, Ziploc bags, and uh, that's out of sheer laziness. Uh, a lot of times, I'll get a package in the mail. You know, I'll do a trade or something with someone, and I'll get these cigars. I'll get five sticks in a Ziploc bag that's got you know five individual slots in it, and uh, a lot of times I, I don't get it out of the bag to separate, so they stay in the bag. I just I just leave the seal open. You know, I, I don't seal the bag up. I just kind of leave that in the cooler, and that's my my uh, my, my short-term separation anyway, I, I happen to, to individually sort them in, into cigar boxes by, by date received and, and everything else. My, my organization system it gets kind of complicated, but you know, that's kind of beside the point. Um, you know, just getting back to the, the original question at hand, uh, I don't think I have anything to worry about as far as flavors marrying as long as you're not talking long term here. Uh, I, you know, I don't know, did I miss anything, Justin? I think we got that one pretty well covered, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> good advice. Uh, I know the five-finger Ziploc bags you're talking about, I usually get those from JR when I order their five-packs. And I think they were available for sale online as well. And like you said, anytime you get a cigar, they crack the seal on it, so that way you still get the airflow in there, um, and <clears throat> your cigars will last longer and age better. And the cellophane, as we've touched upon in previous episodes, does allow the cigar to breathe a little bit, so it is permeable to uh, to air. So, just leave them in the cellophane and put them in the box and enjoy them. Well, you know, you you mentioned that uh, the JRs has those five finger bags when they, they sell their five packs. I the last uh, five pack I got from JR was uh, the Montesinos, and I think they did come in that five finger bag. I thought that was kind of odd. Has uh, JR switched over to to handling all their five packs in that way, or are they still kind of shrink wrap and five together? Uh, I think it just depends on the cigar. I don't think they're all five in the five finger bags, or they're all just cellophane together with a a piece of wood. It really depends on the cigar. Um, they claim they have the manufacturer do that for them, so maybe it's just what the manufacturer does. Or if JR does it, maybe they like the five finger bag. So I really don't have the definitive answer. All right. Well. But, uh, I think that, that brings us to question four. So what do we got there, Justin? Question four comes to us from Kevin via our contact form. Hey, guys, just wondering where I can find the CAO Visions to buy on, online. None of the tobacco shops where I live carry it yet, and I'm not having any luck online. I really just want to try one or two. I figure with all the hype, I should see what it's about, even though it's a tad out of my regular price range. Thanks, guys. So, Walt, what do you, you got any sources for the Vision? Well, you know, I've only seen it uh, available at local cigar shops, so I really don't know if it's available online. You know, we've we've seen situations before where you know a cigar manufacturer doesn't want their cigar sold online. And one example is uh, the Rocky Patel Old World Reserve. I don't know that you can. You may be able to get them online now, but I remember originally. Uh, you had to get them exclusively from your local tobacconist, so I don't know whether the vision is along the same lines there or if, if they're allowing online sales. I just I researched this a little bit when the question came in. I think I checked seven or eight different uh, resellers that I typically go to, and I didn't find it anywhere. Have, uh, have you had any luck tracking down the vision or, or know anything more than that? Well, I actually checked out JR's website, and they had it listed on there, but they were all sold out. Now, a box of 20 was going for about 240 to $260, I believe, depending on the size. So they're definitely a, a pricier cigar. Um, that's the only place I've seen them. I don't know if anybody's selling singles. If you have a friend who lives in another town or state that has access to a Vision, you might ask them to send you one. I, I have one in my humidor that I got from the RTDA in Vegas uh, last year, and I haven't yet smoked that one, so I couldn't even recommend you recommend to you if it was good or bad. Um, Walt, have you had one of the Visions yet? Yeah, I um, Jerry and I both got a CAO Vision from Cigar Live, 
uh, a little while back. Uh, Stogie, who he is, uh, is actually his real name is Daniel. Well, he uh, he decided to develop these tasting panels with a cigar form, and what he would do was he purchased. He would initially go out and purchase the cigars, and then he would send them to members of the cigar board. Now, since then, manufacturers have really stepped up and have been providing him with tons of cigars to do this with. But uh, of that initial tasting panel, Jerry and I were one of the members. Uh, Bob and Dale were also one of the members to receive cigars. And uh, we did a group review on that cigar, and we both thought it was you know, a decent cigar, not quite worth the $14 that you know, the CAO was asking for them. But, uh, it, you know, it was a decent cigar nonetheless. Okay. Well, hopefully that helps you out a little bit. Uh, like we say, you know, best bet, just keep searching around or find a good friend and give it a try. I definitely would not go out and buy a box of it until you've had at least one or two of them to see if you like them. Uh, so I think that's takes it for that question. Looking for luxury cigar accessories and apparel? Then look no further than Cigarmony.com. From cutters to lighters, humidor stash trays, humidification devices to apparel, Cigarmony.com carries it all. Well, welcome back, folks. We just took a short little production break and uh, just wanted to take just a moment to let you know that uh, segment two of Your Questions, My Answers, episode 14, is brought to you by Cigarmony, the luxury cigar accessories and apparel. Well, that's his slogan, but... <laughs> If you uh, you need luxury cigar accessories and apparel, Mark Neff is definitely the person to go to. Uh, Mark uh, has a fantastic business going, and uh, he has incredible customer support. I've uh, I've not been disappointed with a single purchase I've made from Mark. Been very happy with Cigarmony, and definitely recommend you give him a shot. And uh, moving right along, we have uh, question five from Jeremy, and this comes through the contact form. And. Uh, Jeremy says, hey guys, thanks for discussing my question on the last YQMA segment, but I have another question for you. I am 19 years old and can't legally drink alcoholic beverages with my cigars, so I was wondering what are some good cigars and non-alcoholic drink pairings besides water? For example, what drink would go best with a Maduro wrapped cigar or a natural wrapped cigar? What are some of your favorite combinations? Thanks again for the reviews and answering my questions. So Justin, what would you recommend uh, Jeremy try as a as a minor uh, minor cigar smoker? I, I guess you. Well, of course, I'm going to recommend you got to try the McDuffie or the McDuffie Light. I mean, that's that's just living it up there. Uh, for those of you who are a little confused on what I mean, uh, Bob McDuffie over at Dog Watch, uh, which I dubbed the McDuffie, and if you like a plain tea, then you're enjoying the McDuffie Light. Um, I find. Uh, Hot tea and cold tea work pretty well. Um, I know one of your reviews, Walt, you enjoyed some Earl Grey with your cigar, trying to pair up some uh, cigars and teas. That seemed to go fairly okay for you. Um, I would suggest staying away from anything real sweet. Uh, you really don't want to kind of cloud your palate with uh, a real sweet taste or a real bitter taste because um, that's going to definitely affect the flavor of your cigar and what you pick up which I guess really can be good or bad depending on, on the cigar. Um, <clears throat> as you said, you know, water is, of course, a good thing. Um, I personally, as I've said before, don't like to enjoy any kind of cola with my cigars. However, one guy told me that he thought Diet Coke and cigars was the best thing in the world. So, you know, to each his own on that one. So just, you know, try different things. Um, I don't really have any really good suggestions besides, you know, tea and water. I know it probably doesn't help you too much, so hopefully, as Jerry says, the uh, hardest working member of StogieReview.com, Walt, has a good <laughs> suggestion or three here. So, Walt, what do you think? Well, uh, I, I agree with you on the cola. I'm not, I, I don't like to drink soda with, uh, with cigars, and uh, I think it's just because they're overly sweet. Now, when I drink tea, I usually don't add any kind of sweeter, sweetener aside from a little bit of honey. So, you know, I'm not really overpowered by the sweetness. And when I drink cola, such as you know, whether it's Coke, Pepsi, you know, Dr Pepper, you know, whatever the case may be, they just seem overly sweet. Now, every once in a while, I can get away with drinking like a ginger ale or a Sprite, which isn't too bad. I guess maybe it's the the uncolas that. That uh, that are a little more suitable for my palate anyway. Uh, you mentioned that I that I've drank uh, Earl Grey tea with with cigars, and uh, I I really think that's a good combination. I like 
I like hot tea. Uh, I've been kind of experimenting with it a little bit, and uh, I posed a question for uh, some sources for tea, and I got some some great recommendations. I'm, I'm really looking forward to checking them out. Um, some of the other teas that I've tried that really didn't go so well with cigars are like the the Good Earth brand tea. There's just they're they're overpowered with these herbal flavors and you know lemongrass and all this other stuff. That's just uh, it really takes away from the cigar. And then you've got the same thing with uh, Celestial Seasons. Uh, again, it's another brand of tea that I just wasn't too thrilled with. It really didn't mix well with the cigars. Uh, I've had really good luck with the Earl Grey tea, the Earl Grayer tea, which I still think is just like a, an Earl Grey knockoff, but I have no idea. And uh, a lot of people recommend coffee. I'm not much of a coffee drinker. I know Jerry is. But uh, you'll hear a lot of people say that coffee is a great combination for a Maduro cigar. But, uh, you know, I, not being a coffee drinker, I really can't push that too much. But, uh, you know, just as Justin mentioned, your your best bet is just to, to try different things. You know, water is pretty much the standard uh, for, for me most of the times. But, you know, I like mixing tea in there. So, you know, maybe... Maybe some tea would uh, would go good with your cigars, and uh, try coffee while you're at it. Uh, aside from that, I re I really got nothing. <laughs> this uh, this question really blindsided me. It's because it's really tough to uh, to try to recommend make a recommendation that that's non-alcoholic. Because when I think of uh, a Maduro cigar, the first thing that comes to mind is stout or porter. Uh, just because I, I you know I think that flavor combination is great. So you know when I when I have to take away that alcohol component, it makes it really tough. Well, I've had uh, coffee with tea, with coffee with tea, <laughs> coffee with cigars before, <laughs> and uh, uh, it's it's actually a pretty good combination. Um, depending on you know if you have a Maduro cigar, you might want uh, more of a full-bodied uh, roast on your on your coffee. Um, <clears throat> with with tea, you know, yeah, stay away from the the herbal teas because um, I'm I'm a big fan of Earl Grey as well. I actually got hooked on it when I was watching. Star Trek The Next Generation and you know Captain Picard would always order his Earl Grey tea hot and I actually found one of the glasses that looks just like the one they had on the show so that's kind of my Earl Grey tea glass and go ahead and make fun of me yes I'm a Trekkie I enjoy the show um, there's also something you might want to try Walt is the Earl Grey green tea so you get all the benefits of a nice green tea but with the uh, flavor of Earl Grey um, and also a, a tea called Darjeeling. It's in the same family as Earl Grey with the same flavor profile. So um, maybe we should try and do a couple of future reviews and pair some teas up and see how that goes. So uh, I think, a, yeah, go ahead. That's, that, that sounds great. That's, that, that sounds great. I would, uh, I'd love to do that. I'm, all, I'm really into tea. I like it. Uh, more, more so hot tea than, than cold tea. Uh, if it's cold tea, the only, the only stuff I really like is uh, Turkey Hill brand tea. Uh, but you know, you can't go wrong with a, a real good hot tea. Just uh, I think it goes great with a cigar. All right, awesome. So good luck, Jeremy. Uh, let us know what you try and you like and don't like, and maybe we can share that with the. Move on to question number six. This one comes to us from Steve via our contact form. He says, "Can anyone tell me how long it takes until the, until the cigar plumes? A rough estimate would be fine." A personal knowledge of certain cigar brands, gauge, and time periods would be much appreciated. I know you mentioned it on one of your reviews. Oh, this was actually Jerry. Uh, I hope, uh, I'm hoping you share some of your knowledge with me. So, Walt, uh, you got any timetable for when plume will actually start to appear on a cigar? Well, maybe we should tell them what plume is first. Uh, well, yeah. Well, plume is uh, the crystallization of the oils on the, the wrapper of the cigar. And uh, with that in mind... Uh, a cigar with more oil in the wrapper would would uh, effectively plume more and sooner. So uh, a time frame would be really difficult to try to predict. I mean, if, if you've got a really oily cigar, typically I find that a really oily Maduro will plume fairly quickly. I mean, I, you can start to see a little bit of plume within like six to eight months as opposed to a, a natural wrapper where, you know, Sometimes you've got to wait quite a bit of time, you know, maybe a year or two before you start to see anything develop on the wrapper. And um, and one important thing to remember about plume is that it's uh, it's when you hold it up to the light, it'll sparkle a little bit. You know, it's uh, crystalline. You don't want to see fuzz. Fuzz will actually be mold. 
But uh, again, you know, I as far as brands of cigars and what will plume sooner than others, you know, I, I'm really at a loss here. I have no idea, you know, what what to tell you as far as a recommendation if you're trying to uh, to get a cigar to plume. Justin, you have? Uh, can you help me out here? I wish I could, but uh, no, I. I don't really have any good valuable tips. Uh, I've never seen any information where people actually keep track of how long a cigar plumes. But I guess the bright side is if you go to your local tobacconist or you order a box of cigars and you see plume on them, you know they've been sitting and aging for some time. Uh, I actually bought some Fuente Robustos that have a, a cedar wrap lining and the brand of it. Uh, the actual size escapes me at the moment, but. <clears throat> I've been noticing that quite a few of them actually do have plume on them, so I know they've been sitting there for probably at least a year, so they uh, they had an excellent flavor to them. So I uh, wish I could help more, but I don't think there's a, a rule of thumb other than what Walt suggested on his uh, on what he's seen. Well, with that said, let's uh, move right along here to uh, question seven. This comes from Charlie through the uh, the contact form, and uh, this is a question I was actually a little excited to answer because he had a cigar that and uh, thought it was fantastic, and I happened to have the same cigar and thought it was a fantastic cigar, so it's interesting here. Uh, Charlie says, recently a fellow Cigar Live member and I went on a box split with the El Cobre cigar by Oliva. This cigar was absolutely wonderful and is the best example I've found of what a full-bodied cigar should be. However, this cigar seems to be pretty obscure and doesn't receive the attention I believe it deserves. Is it one of those hidden gems that you just love to find? Anyway, my, my question is, what are some of the best hidden gem cigars you, have, you, you guys have discovered over the years, and how, how did you come to discover them? So, Justin, what is your, uh, your hidden beauty of a cigar there? Uh, well, actually, coincidentally enough, or coincidentally enough, uh, it's the Sancho Panza. Uh, I, I found the cigar and it was like four bucks, and I figured, eh, you know, what's four bucks to lose? And tried it and just thought it was a phenomenal cigar. And the group that I hang out with thinks the same. I've had a couple different ones by Oliva. Uh, the Oliva family makes some excellent cigars. They they also make cigars for other companies. And I can't think of who that is. I guess I should have looked that up before this question. Um, so, really, how do you discover them? You just try them. Uh, or a friend, you know, like you guys, like this guy's suggesting this particular brand of cigar for people to try. So maybe other people go out and try it. You just, you know, that one in the corner of the of the human you know, give it a shot. If it looks, if you pick up the cigar, it looks like it's got pretty good construction to it. It's got a nice uh, uh, mm, aroma to the tobacco. You know, if you carefully take it out of the cell phone and just kind of smell the end of it, if it smells appealing to you, give it a shot. You, know, you may enjoy it, or it may, you know, be what we refer to as a dog rocket and not good. Uh, <laughs> what about you, Walt? Well, uh, yeah, I, I think you're right on there. Uh, you know, the only way you're going to find that hidden gem of a cigar is uh, to go out there and try, you know, as many different cigars as you can. You know, there's really no, uh, you know, there's no real secret to uh, to discovering them. You just got to, you know, smoke cigars, and uh, you know, it's it's hard work, but uh, someone's got to smoke them cigars. But, uh, anyway, the. Uh, he, uh, he mentions that uh, he wonders why a lot of people haven't heard of the, uh, the El Cobre cigar. And uh, I happen to, uh, to know one of the people that were involved with the, the making of that cigar. And uh, it's, it's, it is produced by Oliva. And um, from what I understand, it was kind of a joke. Uh, that this, uh, these two guys were in, I think it was New York, with uh, Jose Oliva. And they got to talking and Jose asked uh, Dave you know, well, what do you like in a cigar? And, you know, Dave explained to him, and, and Jose says, oh, you're like my father, you like them stinky cigars no one likes, and, and goes on and on. And then uh, a few weeks later, Dave gets this uh, bundle of cigars fresh off the rolling table, you know, wrapped in brown paper that's soaked with oil from, you know, these brand new fresh cigars. And, you know, Dave goes on to say that, you know, every, he handed them out to the cigar shop, you know, everyone in the cigar shop, and they're sitting around in a circle smoking these cigars, and, 
they just smell awful, you know. And as he looks around, people have a bead of sweat rolling off their face, and uh, that's that's where the cigar came from. Uh, Dave and, uh, and a partner went in and, and began marketing uh, that blend. Uh, Dave had to step away from it when when he started working for Oliva, uh, as I'm told anyway. And uh, you know, that's just how the cigar was. I happened to get one from. Uh, Sam Licia, who is a an Oliva rep in Western Pennsylvania, and uh, I thought the cigar was fantastic. From what I understand, there's only one one uh, reseller for the cigar, and that is uh, the only person that's involved with the cigar anymore. But uh, you know, other than that, I really don't know anything else about the cigar other than you know I thought it was a really good cigar. As far as uh, hidden gems that I've come across, well, uh, I don't know uh, nothing really budget friendly I don't think. Uh, I think the Don Pepin Garcia uh, black label, the Cuban classic Perla size, which is a 40 by 4 is a fantastic cigar. Uh, a little firecracker. I, I just think it's a fantastic cigar. I love it. And uh, you know, a lot of people know about that cigar. So I guess it's not quite a hidden gem. Uh, unfortunately I guess I really don't have uh, that, that hidden gem cigar. Uh, you know, everyone else has helped me find them. So I haven't discovered any on my own. At least, that's, uh, at least that's, that's my take on it. I don't think I've found any that, uh, that haven't been already pointed out. Sorry, I couldn't help more there, Charlie. Well, hopefully that uh, sheds a little light on that subject for you, Charlie. And hey, if you find some hidden gems, share with your friends. Let us know so uh, we can enjoy them too. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to question number eight here. This one's from Austin via our contact form. I am a beginner smoker and tried at least 11 different cigars. Most of that I have tried left me very lightheaded and sleepy, while some were nice, smooth smokes that left me relaxed. Is there any suggestions on any cigars that is a nice, light smoke that will not leave me lightheaded in the end? Also, the tobacco shop where I buy my cigars holds monthly cigar tasting events. Just exactly how do cigar tastings work? Is it similar to wine tastings? I think it would be tough to smoke a bunch of different cigars in one day while I'm just used to smoking it. Well, the, uh, I, I think that if most of the cigars that Austin is smoking are leaving him uh, lightheaded and sleepy, he should uh, maybe try a lighter bodied cigar or something that's a little more mild. I think that maybe the nicotine is taking effect on him. Either, either try to gradually step down a little bit or uh, get a little more sugar in your system, which helps break down the nicotine. Or, um, you know, try to eat before you smoke your cigar, and uh, you should feel a whole lot better when you're done. Now, um, on to the cigar tastings. Um, uh, it's not like a wine tasting. You don't, uh, you're not sitting around trying a bunch of different cigars. Basically what happens is a, a cigar representative comes out, and they, you know, sometimes they'll have you know, a lineup of cigars for you to choose from, or sometimes they're focusing on one cigar. One particular event that I'm going to next week is the, the Oliva Serie V tasting. So I'm going to be going there. They're going to give me an Oliva Serie V to taste. Uh, that's the only cigar that, that I'll be smoking. I won't be smoking a you know, wide variety or anything like that. And uh, the whole idea is just to try the cigar, see if you like it, and uh, you know, if you do, you're encouraged to buy more. And uh, that's that's really all there is to it. It's not like uh, a wine tasting where they're giving you little samples of cigars and, and and you're smoking this wide variety in this short period of time and just getting overloaded. It's uh, it will be one cigar or one from a variety of cigars. You know they're not they're not going to push like ten cigars down your throat or anything like that. So what are, what are your experiences uh, with cigar tastings, Justin? Well, it's kind of similar to what you said. Um, again, you know, cigar tasting is just kind of a, a promotional event where uh, your local tobacconist will say, hey, we're featuring this particular cigar. Uh, usually they have a representative from the company there, and they may say, hey, we're featuring cigar A, and they're, they had they just released, you know, lines B and C. So if you, you get your choice of B or C for free, um, they're due... The ones I've gone to have done raffle drawings where they give away a hat or a cutter or a lighter or uh, a five pack of cigars or something. So it's just a way to get people to come out and you know support your local tobacco and, this and also try a new brand that you haven't tried before, or a new size or a new line. One that I recently went to was Troya. 
um, and they were promoting the classical line. So I got uh, an opportunity to pick one of those as my selection. I think he had probably three or four different sizes that they were offering. Um, I highly recommend going to them. Anytime your local tobacconist has an event, go to it. It's a great way to meet different people. Actually, that's how I, I got hooked up with Stinky and the, uh, the Las Vegas crew here. I um, just went to a tasting and met them, and now I hang out with them all the time, and we smoke different cigars. So, it's, like I said, it's great to support your local tobacconist, try new brands, make new friends. You can make business connections, um, make good friends. So it's, it's a great, great experience. So if your shop's off from, go to it. Anything else to add to that, Walt? Well, uh, well, just a quick question. Do you have? Are there any cigar shops you can think of that do, you know, you know, good tastings or or a variety of tastings uh, in the area for anyone that may live out there in Vegas? Yeah, it's called the Big Smoke. It comes out in November, <laughs> put on by Cigar Aficionado. <laughs> that's um, that's really the only kind of tasting if you compare it to what a wine tasting is. Obviously, with if you're going to taste the wine, you can just take a little sip and get the full flavor of, of the wine, but you have to actually enjoy the cigar more. So you can't just take like two or three puffs and be like, yeah, that's good, that's bad. That's just not how cigars work. So um, there's never anything where come and try these 10 different cigars and tell us what you like. I've never experienced that. Can you recommend the shop out there for someone to, uh, to go to for a, a cigar tasting in Vegas? I got... I, like I don't know if uh, if Casa Fuente does uh, you know cigar tastings, being that they're you know primarily Arturo Fuente. They have never done anything that they classify as a cigar tasting. Um, they've never done buy one get one free. Uh, they're just kind of there to promote the Fuente brand and cigar smoking and enjoyment. So they've never done anything. We've had local events there. We do meetups during the RTDA here in Vegas and the Big Smoke. So if you are planning to come to the Big Smoke this year, you know, um, let me know and be a great opportunity to meet you and have a cigar and check out Casa Fuente. As far as if you're in Vegas, um, most of the cigar shops are going to be off the strip that I go to. That's where a lot of local guys are. But a place like Phil Cigars, they do one. Uh, let's see, who else? Uh, cigar Box. Um, they're actually right off the strip on Rancho Drive, which would make sense when you get out here. Um, and a host of other ones. Uh, Tobacco Leaf's another big company that they do some tasting as well. So uh, that's all I got on that one. Well, I, uh, I, I know of two in the area that, that are going to be having uh, tastings, which is uh, why I was asking you if, if you know of any in your area, just so, so I wasn't the only one promoting a cigar shop tonight. <laughs> But um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't know if if JM Cigars in Exton is having an event anytime soon. I know they were having uh, you know a pretty decent amount of events, you know, back to back. Uh, they were doing them like once a month. Uh, so if you're in the Philly area or Exton, you know, Fraser down in that way, uh, you can check out uh, JM Cigars. Um, and usually they have flyers and stuff inside. Uh, I haven't been I haven't been down there since I moved, but uh, you know it's a real nice shop. Um, there's an event on July 19th that I'm going to be attending at Top Shelf Cigars in Skip Pack. It's uh, an Oliva Siri V event. So if you are in uh, in the Skip Pack area, uh, give uh, Dave Wagner, the sales rep for Oliva Cigars, you know help him out and. Uh, Go check out the uh, the Oliva Series V at Top Shelf Cigars on uh, July 19th. And uh, the last event that I'm aware of is uh, another Oliva Series V pre-launch event, which is at Kensington Tobacco, which is in West Reading. The event's on July 24th, and it's actually a cigar dinner, so it's a little more involved than just a cigar tasting. You know, they uh, you know you you you'll, you'll actually be paying for this one. Uh, Usually when you go to a cigar tasting, there's no cover charge or anything to get in. But because this one's a, a cigar dinner, you know, you're, gonna, you're, pay, you're basically paying for your cigar samples, your dinner, and door prizes. So if you're in the Reading area or going to be in the Reading area on the, or on the 24th, uh, check out Kensington Tobacconists and, uh, you know, stop on in for the, the Oliva Series V pre-launch event. But uh, 
that's all the plugging I'm going to do for tonight. I can't think of any more to cigar shops to, uh, to plug. So, so <laughs> with that in mind, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back in just a sec. Visit StinkyCigar.com to order your Stinky Cigar Ashtray. And when you check out, use the promo code STOGIEREVIEW, one word, 3C, free shipping. <clears throat> All right, and welcome back once again to the last section of questions here at stogiereview.com. Just another reminder to visit StinkyCigar.com to order your uh, Stinky Cigar Ashtray. If you don't have a Stinky Cigar Ashtray, what are you waiting for? They're awesome. They're the best ashtray in the world. And, uh, yeah, I'm a little biased. He's a good friend, but... You know, it's also a great product. Jerry has one. Walt has one. I know uh, Jerry's has probably saved his house from burning down a couple times when he's lit the cedar on fire. So uh, not only does it um, <clears throat> carefully put out your cigar ashes, but it could save your home. So uh, get you, uh, go up there and pick one of these up. Use the promo code Stogie Review, one word, and Stinky will throw in free shipping for you. So get up there and check him out. And he's got a lot of great pictures and history on why they call him Stinky, so uh, we thank Stinky for all of his support and the excellent ashtrays. So we're going to go ahead and jump into question nine, and I don't remember if it's your turn or mine, Walt. Uh, you can go ahead and take this one. All right. Question nine comes to us from Andrew via MySpace. He says, hey guys, I'm a huge guy put out. I'm wondering what are the first five cigars that come to mind when someone asks you for a recommendation for a good cigar. So Walt, what are your five choices? Wow, this is a tough one. There's a lot of, lot of good cigars out there, but uh, the first that come to mind would be the, uh, the Padron 1926, the Padron 1924, the, uh, the Oliva Serie G Maduro, the Oliva Serie G Cameroon, uh, and the Don Papin Garcia Black Label Cuban Classic. What about you? Actually, I had like five more in mind. <laughs> I could have just kept one going. It sounds like it's right off the list there. Um, well, mine would be, let's see, uh, Partagas Black. Uh, absolutely love that cigar. Uh, Romeo and Juliet uh, uh, Anniversario. That's an, another great one. Anything Upman. You know, my love for H. Upman series. Sancho Panza. Uh, Fuente Double Chateau Maduro, another great smoke, um, and uh, La Florida Dominicana Chisel. I really enjoy that one as well. So those are my five that come to mind. I think that was five. I hope that was five. Uh, well, Walt, you want to share your, your other five with us? Sure, I'll do five more. The uh, the uh, Tatawahi Series P, uh, the P1 size in particular. Jerry got me hooked on this cigar. They uh, they come 31 to a box. Um, Jerry and I get ours for $71 a box. Uh, I can't tell you who to buy them from because uh, because the price is so low, they would actually get in trouble if we if we uh, told you. So if you know our source for the Tatawai Series P, give them a call, and uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed with their cigar prices, or at least not not the price on this box of cigars anyway. Uh, next cigar that comes to mind is uh, any of the Padron 1000 series Maduros. Uh, again, this is a very good cigar. Great Maduro flavors. Um, the, in particular, you know, the 2000 and the Laundress are both uh, affordable cigars. Uh, the Laundress in particular is, I think, $52 a box, $55 a box at TNT Cigars. Wow, the, the list is just uh, goes on and on. The Avo 80th is a fantastic cigar. I uh, I, I had the pleasure of smoking that cigar with Bob and Dale on uh, Dog Watch Cigar Radio quite a while back. I think that that was our second show that uh, Stogie Review did with uh, the guys from Dog Watch. Uh, I think I'm on number four. The uh, again, just as you mentioned, I, I like that uh, La Flor Dominicana uh, chisel, uh, the double Lajero chisel in particular. I really don't care too much for the the standard Lajero line. Uh, I, I think that double Lajero just adds a whole lot more complexity. To uh, to the blend, uh, and number five, the uh, the Indian Tobacco uh, Cameroon Legend. Uh, again, this is a, a you know affordable cigar, and it's got good Cameroon flavors. Just uh, really happy with the bundle I got on Cigar Bid for like 
dirt cheap. I think I got them for $30 a bundle. Uh, that's another good thing to, to keep an eye out on is uh, cigar bid. You can you can really get some decent deals if uh, if you avoid the uh, the bid frenzies and uh, and going overboard on bidding. But there's there's five. You know that was harder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> well, while we're kind of on the subject of our top five cigars, I'm curious. At what point do you think a single stick is just overpriced? Well, um, I, I guess if it falls on its face in terms of flavor, then you know the, you know, anything can be overpriced. Uh, the Padron 1926s are pricey; they're actually very pricey. But uh, I think they're a very good cigar. They're more than I would typically spend, but you know, around Christmas time I'll buy one. You know, my, around my birthday I'll buy one. Uh, so they're more of a special occasion cigar for me. I certainly wouldn't go out and buy one on a regular basis. The uh, the sixty fours are a little more affordable. I buy they're I think eight dollars a piece for the the small Principe sizes. But uh, yeah, if a cigar is just kind of lacking in any of the departments, you know, flavor, construction, quality, any of that, uh, you know, it's uh, you know price is going to become an issue real quick with me. Where, where do you really draw the line as far as when a cigar becomes overpriced? Um, well, again, you know, your same criteria. Uh, a lot of it depends on, on the flavor and the quality of the construction. But <clears throat> usually when I start to hesitate to even try it, it is right around the $15 range and up. Um, sometimes I, I guess I feel cheap and don't really want to spend that kind of money on a cigar unless I know somebody who's actually tried it and said, yeah, it's a pretty decent stick, give it a try. Um, I tend to, to think that when cigars start getting that price, they start carrying kind of this bar, so we're going to charge this high price to it. Um, so I just kind of have trouble paying that kind of money for a, a single cigar. Wow, I'm, I'm, uh, I fall in the same boat as you, but uh, actually my, my comfort zone starts really affecting me at, at $10. I, I really don't like spending more than $10 on one single cigar unless... You know, just like you mentioned, someone has told me that it's a really good cigar, they've enjoyed it. Uh, otherwise, you know, I'm really hesitant to spend more than $10 unless, you know, I've had it and I enjoy it. And that's the case of the, the Pedro 1926. Yeah, and on that same line, you know, I kind of want to try that CAO Sopranos one just to see what the hype's about. But, you know, the first thick price is, is fairly high on that, so I don't know if I'm going to get around to trying that one or not. I think I remember seeing that at a, a local cigar shop for twelve dollars, and uh, the general consensus on that cigar is that it's, you know, it's overpriced. It's it's a decent cigar, but it's certainly not worth twelve dollars. But uh, you know, I, I I can't say that for sure because I haven't had the the cigar, you know, to tell you whether or not it's it's overpriced. All right. Well, Andrew, there's our top ten to ten from Walt and five from me. So you got fifteen uh, cigars to try. Well, actually, we got a couple repeats, so you got a good, you know, 12, 13 cigars. So uh, give them a shot if you're looking for something to try and let us know what you think. Uh, Walt, do you want to take us on to question 10? Sure, we got uh, question number 10 from Pat, and this uh, comes through MySpace. And Pat says, Hey, Stoger Review guys, I can't thank you. He says, I can't thank you enough, but I think he means I can't thank you enough for all that you guys have done to improve my cigar smoking experiences. So either, actually I probably put that typo in there because I retyped all these questions, but anyway, <laughs> moving right along, he, uh, he goes on to say, my question has to do with finding the best prices on cigars. You guys probably get all kinds of discounts and free stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I'm wondering where you guys shop for the best price on your cigars. How do you go about comparing one shop to another? So Justin... How do you go about pricing out your cigars and, and finding the best, you know, bang for your buck or, you know, the best deal? Well, I typically order, when I order boxes, I order from jrcigar.com. I uh, discovered them probably a good five, six years ago, and they seem to have just about the lowest price on cigars. Um, I will also look at some of the other bigger names that I've heard of, like, Cigars International, Famous Smoke, uh, Corona Cigar Company, which I know uh, Bob from Dog Watch goes to since they're based in Florida. And you just kind of compare, you know, you look at what's the box price, what's the shipping fee. Um, most of the times, like those manufacturers, they're even out to be plus or minus probably 5 to $10 of each other. So if you've ordered from one company before and you're 
comfortable with the quality of product they send, how they ship it, how they pack it, then continue to order from them. Um, if you're looking to try someone else out, then buy another box, you know, see, check the price um, and just just see what the difference is. Uh, typically, I find that uh, JR beats most of them. Uh, definitely don't want this to be like a JR commercial, but uh, I do enjoy them. I, I also enjoy that they started offering the five packs as we were talking about earlier with the uh, five finger cases. So you can typically get a good five pack of cigars for like 18, well, actually take that back, nine to 25 to 30 dollars depending on the cigars you order and their shipping charges like two dollars and fifty cents for the first five items each uh, and then it's like two dollars or fifty cents after i don't remember but it's a it's great shipping rate so just search around you know uh, order from people you know and trust or other people you know and also check out the forums uh, lots of different forums say hey don't uh, order from this company or order from this company they got great service they got great quality products great prices uh, you know just buyer beware do your research you know don't try buy a fly-by-night company or one where just people are like you you read more bad experiences than good then you probably want to stay away from that particular company what about you Walt? well uh, just to, just to address the first part here we uh, I can probably count the number of free items I got on one hand uh, through Stogie Review um, we uh, we purposely, you know, try not to get free things just because we uh, we don't want to be biased. So when we uh, w there is a standard disclosure or not so much a disclosure, but when when arrangements are made for us to review a cigar, which doesn't happen very often, um, they're they're told up front, hey, look, you know, we're doing an honest review. Uh, the fact that you're giving us cigars to review you know, free of charge, uh, does not guarantee you a good review. Uh, if this upsets you in any way or if you don't feel comfortable with uh, with us being completely honest uh, about your cigar, then, pl you know, please don't send them. And it, it's kind of startling, but we've actually had a few people not send us the cigars after we made that statement. So uh, with that in mind, we uh, we really don't get any free stuff. We, we don't get anything free from uh, any of the retailers. Uh, it's just the occasional uh, fan uh, submission. You know, they'll send something out for us to review, and we always thank them, uh, you know, greatly for that. And uh, you know, on occasion, we'll we'll get a manufacturer that'll send us a cigar to review. And again, you know, we tell them up front that hey, this is a review. You know, you're not buying a good review, and this and that. But uh, anyway, as far as uh, how do I get the best deal? The first thing I do is. If I'm going to buy a box of cigars, I head over to CigarCyclopedia.com and I go into the comparison shopper. And what that is, is it's a, a pretty big database of, uh, I think it's five or six of the top retailers. It's it's their price listings uh, on, on boxes of cigars. So, so let's say you want the Central Ponza Double Maduro. So you head over to the comparison shopper and you look and you see that you know, JR Cigars wants say forty dollars a box. Mike's, you know, Mike's Cigars wants forty-two dollars a box. Famous wants forty-one dollars a box. Cigars International wants forty-four dollars a box. And you know, and that'll give you a good idea of what the major players are, are asking for those cigars. And then I'll kind of, you know, I'll base my decision off that. You know, there's a couple of smaller cigar companies that I'll I'll look into for for you know less expensive boxes. But uh, that's that's generally what I do, unless I'm looking for a five pack. And then the first place I go is JR Cigars. Uh, they generally have the bigger selection of five packs. Now their sizes, they don't offer a whole lot of different sizes for for their five packs. But the sizes that they do offer, their prices are very good. And uh, just as you mentioned, Justin, you can get a decent pack, five pack of cigars for nine dollars and fifty cents. And then uh, pay two fifty to have them shipped to you, and in the end, you know, thirteen dollars for a for a five pack of cigars that would cost you maybe twenty bucks somewhere else. So uh, that's that's the first place I go for five packs, and uh, and it doesn't hurt to shop around your local cigar shop. You know, there are times when I found that uh, you know a local cigar shop might be trying to liquidate you know some certain cigars, so they're offering them buy two get one free or 
you know, buy three, get two free. You know, they might offer some kind of promotion to try to, to move the cigars that they have. Or, you know, maybe they got some new cigars in and they want to try to build up some hype behind them. So, you know, they'll offer them a little bit less or they'll give you some kind of deal with them. So uh, that would be my suggestion. Just uh, don't be afraid to shop around. Don't, uh, don't lock in on one price and think that, you know, it's set in stone because you have tons of options out there. Just uh, look around and see, you know, see what you can do. All right, so let's go on to our final question, number 11. This one comes to us from Vince via MySpace. He says, we know who is a Mac guy. Well, actually, there's two of us, me and Brian. And we know who the PC guys are. Uh, we know what cigars you smoke, beverages you drink, podcasts you listen to, websites you visit, and your superhero names. I've been watching since that episode. But I'd like to know what TV shows you guys like to watch. I'm big on Lost and Heroes. Uh, Walt, so uh, what are your favorite TV programs? Well, uh, I'm actually a little upset. The one show that I used to watch faithfully, like every day, got taken off the air, and that was a show called It Takes a Thief. I think it was on, it was either on TLC or Discovery Channel. It was uh, basically these two guys would uh, would go to a homeowner, get their permission to break into their house, and uh, they'd get a, a security makeover out of it. And I, you know, I just, I love that show, you know. Guys would break into the house, you'd see the homeowner get all upset. You know, maybe that's a little morbid, you know. I'm sitting here laughing as this guy's, you know, tearing apart someone's house. But, uh, you know, it was both informative and, and entertaining at the same time. But, you know, that's off the air, so. Uh, the next show I like is uh, actually just, I think it aired the first time this week. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the next episode, which is a show called Greek. It's, uh, I, I think it's on one of the family networks. It's, uh based on uh, college life and fraternities and lots of alcohol and sex and it's actually kind of funny. Uh, I really wouldn't think it would be on a family channel, but it is. And uh, aside from that, uh, Sopranos. Uh, really, it's, that's really it. I don't, I don't get the chance to watch a whole lot of TV, listen to a lot of music, just uh, not much TV. What about you, Justin? What do you watch, what do you watch when you uh, get a chance to sit down in front of the tube? Well, one of the favorite shows, and not just because I lived here, I watched it before, is Las Vegas. Uh, I think it's it's a fun, entertaining show. It's you know, casino life is not really like that. So, don't think don't come out here and try to get a job in security and think that your life's going to be as fun and exciting as that. I'm pretty sure it's not. Uh, I do enjoy watching the CSIs. Uh, I loved, absolutely loved the show Alias, and tell. Ben Affleck put his seed in Jennifer, but let's not talk about that because that's a sore spot. And, um, and then that show got off the air. Um, I like Lost, but sometimes I think J.J. Abrams needs to give us a little bit more. Um, he's good on doing those little twists, but sometimes it's like, okay, open the purse strings, give us a little bit more, tell us what's going on. Uh, as far as summer programs, Hell's Kitchen is pretty entertaining just watching these people. Uh, Chef Gordon Ramsay there is is a pretty funny guy, especially when he starts going off on people and telling them, you know, piss off and everything else. It's it's good. Um, I did watch that It Takes a Thief, and I agree with you, Walt. That was a pretty entertaining show. Uh, it's amazing just to see how your neighbors just don't care sometimes. You know, they see somebody just walking up, and they don't stop them and say, hey, you know, what are you doing here? Are you supposed to be here? Do they know you're going to be here? So to me, that was kind of a, a nice little wake-up call. And I believe one of the news programs did something like that, too, of just be more aware of your surroundings. So it kind of taught you a little bit, too, not just entertainment. Uh, what else do I watch? Oh, I don't know. I watch. I got too many programs. I got. I built my own DVR, digital video recorder, and we just got too much stuff on there. The only thing that I really hate is you start getting into these shows, and then, boom, they're canceled. And they leave you hanging with, uh, with whatever plot line they were working on. Like I know Jericho, I never got into it, but they dropped it and the fans were just totally mad. They're like, you know, at least close the storyline. So apparently they had some kind of campaign and they sent peanuts, which I guess was some kind of inside joke on the show, and it's back on the air. So apparently that worked. So I think what we're going to do this year is if there's any new shows that we're interested in, we're just going to record them on our DVR you know, wait a couple of weeks and see if they get canned before we check them out. Otherwise, why waste the time to get into it? Why, you know, start liking the storyline or the characters and boom, the network says, oh, we're not making enough money. We're going to toss it. So, 
Well, folks, that does it for episode 14 of Your Questions, My Answers. We, uh, we covered 11 questions. I hope we, uh, you know, we, we provided some, some good insight for you. Uh, with that in mind, Justin, why don't you uh, take us on out? All right. As Walt likes to remind everybody, you know, uh, Your Questions, My Answers would not be possible without our wonderful audience sending us in your questions. Uh, please send us any question you have. There are no stupid questions. Uh, there's no question that's that's too basic or hopefully nothing too advanced that we can't answer yet. Uh, we enjoy answering them. Uh, <clears throat> we uh, we actually look forward to this. We know you guys enjoy the Your Questions, My Answers, episode 14. I realize I'm not doing exactly as Walt does. This is my first time on this one. Um, but uh, it, it's enjoyable to answer. Um, you know, everyone can learn something good from them. Hopefully, Jerry will be joining us again real soon. Uh, other than that, you know, thanks for watching. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for your support. Please visit our sponsors. They help keep us going. Uh, we will. We only recommend the the really good people. So you're gonna have good quality products and services from them. And uh, we un until next time. Uh, I'm Justin for StogieReview.com. And I'm Walt White. Then happy smoking. <laughs> <laughs>